We're now going to take a look at an example. So what we want to do is determine our output voltage and our diode currents for the circuit shown below when our input voltage is zero. So we're told this input voltage over here on the left is equal to zero. We can see we have two diodes, D1 and D2, positive and negative supplies, and a couple resistors. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the procedure outlined in that supplemental information given on Canvas. So shortly, we're going to assume states, analyze the circuit, check our assumptions, and then if needed, we're going to readjust our assumptions. So if I were teaching this in class, what I like to do is have students give me their assumptions and then work the circuit that way. So for this example in particular, I really encourage you guys to try to make your own assumptions and work the problem before seeing how I work through it. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a shot. So, of course, in our first step, we're assuming diode states, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a blind guess. So a lot of times, particularly for simpler configurations with only two or three diodes, uh, we can make an educated guess about the diode states. In this case, if we follow this path here, what we can see is, let's say that our D2 is on because roughly we have this plus five volts on our P side and a negative five volts on our N side. So, you know, assuming we don't have any voltage drop across that 5K ohm or 10K ohm resistor, that should be enough to turn the diode on. Okay, so now let's assume that there's relatively small amounts of voltage drops across these two resistors. What we would have is five volts here, a little less than five volts. Then we drop across our diode, which again, we assumed is on, which would mean that we, we would have a, a current or sorry, a voltage here at V primed of approximately five minus whatever our V gamma is. And so that wasn't given in the problem statement, so we're gonna make an assumption about that. But remember, V gamma is typically about 0.7. So that means that this is about 4.3 or maybe a little lower, depending on uh, how much voltage is dropped across those resistors. So now if we look at D1, we see that it has zero on this side and 4.3 on this side, again, roughly. So we can say that D2 is probably going to be off. Okay, so let's make that our first assumption, analyze the circuit, and then we need to check that, that uh, assumption. So we're going to start by assuming, and remember this is really an educated guess, we aren't just blindly guessing, uh, in some cases, you might have to have a blind guess, or particularly if you're just getting into circuit analysis, it might not be obvious to you, and that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, so assuming that our D1, we said, is off, and D2 is on. So we want to check these assumptions. And again, as I said, we weren't given any information about cut-in voltage. So if that's the case, what we can do is assume, but we always want to state our assumption. So write that down, give it explicitly. So let's assume that our V gamma, let's assume it's a PN junction diode uh, of silicon. So about 0.7 volts. And let's assume that, that that resistance R sub F is zero. So we're kind of assuming an ideal case, uh, not, not accounting for internal resistance there. All right, so the first thing we want to do then before analyzing our circuit is redraw it based on our assumptions. So let me just paste our circuit here. And because we're assuming D1 is off, we're going to replace that with an open circuit. So we have something that looks like this. And because our D2 is on, we're going to replace that with a voltage source. And so our voltage source is going to be positive on this side and negative on this side. And that value is going to be V gamma. And so one thing I didn't do here that we can do that might be helpful is we can define some voltages and currents. So of course our diode voltage is defined as positive on our P side for a normal PN junction diode. Current is in the direction of the arrow. So I D1, same thing over here for our diode D2. We have V D2 and I D2. So we have something that looks like that. So we can carry those down to here because we're going to need to evaluate some of these when we're checking our assumptions. So of course we can see this ID1 should be zero. Our VD1 we're gonna to have to check when we check our assumptions. Our VD2 is V gamma, and we're gonna to need to evaluate our ID2 to check our assumption for diode D2. 
Uh, we can also define some other currents to make things a little easier. So we can define, let's call this IR1, so current in our resistor one, and let's call this current IR2. And so let me come back here and put this V prime on this middle part as well. Okay, so this circuit now, of course, is a lot easier to analyze because we see there's no current. So this ID1 equals zero, which basically means we only have one path for current flow that looks like this. So what we can do is just a KVL equation. So we can say IR1 is equal to ID2 is equal to IR2. Okay, and so what that's equal to is going to be from KVL and Ohm's law, V plus minus V gamma minus V minus divided by 10K plus 5K. Plugging in the values, we have five minus 0.7 minus negative five divided by 15K ohms. And we get that all of those currents, but the one we're interested in is ID2 are equal to 0 0.62 milliamps. And so note, if I have 15 in K ohms, if I just plug in 15 in the calculator, I'm gonna get my current in milliamps. Um, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can always take the 15 K ohm back to the base units of ohms and plug in 15,000. Uh, so we get 0.62 milliamps, which is equal to 620 microamps. So now we can check our assumption for diode D2. We see that for diode D2, ID2 is greater than zero. So that means our D2 assumption is good. So D2 assumption, correct. However, that does not necessarily mean that our assumption for D1 is correct. So we still need to check our D1 assumption. And so that's important to note because note that we could find our V out now with this current ID2, uh, if, even without checking our D1 assumption, but it's important to note that we have gotten the correct state for D1 because if it turns out that's incorrect, then that's going to change our analysis. We no longer have that single path for our current. So let's go ahead and check our, our assumption for D1. And we do that by checking our diode voltage because we assumed it was off. So check our diode voltage. So from KVL, we can do a KVL around this way, or really we can think about it as just to this V prime, however you wanna do it. Um, I'm kind of gonna do this in, in almost sort of two steps, is we can say that our VD1 is equal to our input voltage VI minus that V prime. Well, of course our VI is zero, so that's just negative V prime. And our negative V prime, uh, basically we can get what our V prime is by looking at this branch. So again, you can think of it uh, as KVL, or you can think of it as we start here and we add a voltage to get to V prime. Uh, either way you wanna think about it, we get that this is, switch back to my pin, is negative, because we had the negative out front here, negative V minus plus IR2, times the 10K resistance. So plugging in values, we get that VD1 is equal to negative, uh, negative five plus our 0.62 milliamps times our 10K ohm. Now in this case, our K for our K ohms and our M for our milliamps are going to cancel each other out. But again, if you're comfortable, not comfortable with that, you can plug that directly into uh, as amps and ohms. So we plug all of that in and we get negative 1.2 volts. Okay, and so what does that tell us? Well, we assume that this diode was off, which means reverse bias, so the voltage should be less than V gamma, which it is, we have a negative voltage, so that means our D2 assumption is correct as well. Sorry, D1, this one is. So our D1 assumption is correct. And of course that means that our ID1 is zero as we've shown above. So that would be the second part of, or one of the other things that was asked for our diode currents. So now we have our diode current ID2 is 620, 
620 micrograms, our diode current ID1 is zero, the last thing we wanna find is our output voltage. So our output voltage, we can use this circuit here, and now we're trying to find this voltage here at the bottom of the 5K ohm resistor. Now, of course, there's several ways that we can do that. We could start with the voltage here and subtract the voltage across the 5K. We could start here and add the voltage across the 10K, add the voltage across the diode. Both are gonna give us the same answer. Uh, just to be consistent with what I have in the notes, I have that V out is equal to that V plus minus IR1 times the 5K. And plugging in values, we have five volts minus our 0.62 milliamps times our 5K. And so what we get for that is that our V out is equal to 1.9 volts. And that's the end of that example. Um, what we're gonna do in the next video though, is we're gonna take a look at what happens if we make the wrong assumption, because it's probably not very useful to just see me go through this and, and see me say, oh yeah, that assumption's good, that assumption's good, but how are you able to tell when you make a wrong assumption? So that's what we're gonna look at in the next video.